back, Refinery. How great is it to be back in home groups? Uh, we had a break for spring break. A lot of you went traveling. Uh, it was cool to see those pictures. Um, go ahead and share some of the pictures of your spring break on the Slack. Uh, you know, it, it looks like a lot of you had a good time. Um, announcements today will be at the end of this video. So, uh, you know, just so you guys know, um, I don't want to front load it because I want to get into the meat of today. Um, we have uh, been doing this series on prayer and it's a little disjointed. It's not like this, 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 this. It's more or less I used a lot of uh, that information from that questionnaire that you guys filled out the first couple weeks uh, about prayer. Use that info to kind of guide where we're going. Um, and uh, we talked about confession because some of you guys had questions about confession um, and stuff like that. And so one of the other questions that came up was um, frequency of prayer. And it was actually a, a question that I asked you of, of, of how often do you pray in certain kind of prayers? And, and some of you said frequently, rarely, etc. cetera, right? Uh, thank you for the honesty in those uh, questionnaires. Uh, it was very helpful and, and cool to see that a lot of you are really engaging in a prayer life. Um, you're walking with God, you're, you're interacting with Him, you understand that it's uh, a conversation with between you and God, and, and that's awesome. And so I want to encourage you in that. Um, some of the questions that you guys had is, was in regards to how often should we pray? And the answer, um, unfortunately, you know, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, and I hope we, we see the fortunate side, is we're going to read a verse today that says we need to pray unceasingly or continually or never ceasing like and and some of you are like whoa what's the deal so so let's jump into the scripture for today it is first thessalonians 5 16 through 18 uh these are good options if you're ever asked what's your favorite verse and you're like hey uh i'd be really you know cliche for john 3 16 um, you know, or some of you use Jesus wept. Uh, this is also some of those shortest verses. Um, five, first Thessalonians five, 16 through 18. Um, it takes you more longer to say that than the actual verse, but, uh, starting in verse 16, it says, rejoice, always pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the uh, God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So again, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. Wow, that is a high bar. And some people read this and go, surely Paul didn't mean always. Like, oh, he's using this for effect. Um, pray continually. Like, eh, what else do you do in life, right? You know, give thanks in all circumstances. And then I wanted to, to figure it out. I, I go, okay, let, let's look into the Greek. Let's, let's look in, and see if continually means something else. And so, so I want to pull back uh, the, the, the curtain a little bit on the Greek words. Um, rejoice always means rejoice always. <laughs> There's no funny business about that word, right? Verse 17, right? It says pray continually means pray continually. So, so there's no doubt about it that Paul means pray continually, rejoice always, um, give thanks in all circumstances. He's meaning it all the time. 100% of the time is all the time, right? And so... Um, what, what about life? Aren't we supposed to do other things? Aren't we supposed to, you know, uh, baptize and, and, and make disciples and uh, have conversations, understand culture, um, you know, raise kids, discipline children, raise them up and, and teach them scripture? But, but if I can't do that, if, if, if I'm rejoicing always, pray continually and giving thanks in all circumstances, if I'm constantly praying, I, I can't do that stuff. Yes, Paul means always, continually, in all circumstances. But in reading some of this, I've ran across uh, this, this definition of prayer. And we already talked about what is prayer. Um, and and then we're definitely talking about this idea of bending our will to God's will instead of bending God's will 
to our will. Um, but this one commentator put it in just such a beautiful way where it says to prayer, the definition of prayer is to interact with the Lord by switching human wishes or ideas uh, for his wishes as he imparts faith or divine persuasion. So interacting with the Lord by switching human wishes for his wishes as he imparts faith. So that's what we need to do continually. That's what we need to constantly do. We need to constantly think from God's perspective and, and to bend our will to God's will. And interacting with Him, we have full capability at any moment in time to reach out to God the Creator of everything through the Holy Spirit and through the mediator of Jesus Christ that we're able to approach the throne pray without ceasing that, that it needs to become our very breath right we don't think about breathing we don't think about our heart beating my dad's been having some some heart issues and it makes me think more about my heart and and i feel more conscious about it and then you know wearing a watch that, that reads your your heart rate like makes me conscious of my heartbeat, but in all reality, there's nothing I can do that makes it or stops it from beating, right? Imagine if our life, if our prayer life was like that. It was just on autopilot and we're approaching the throne of God and we're bending our will to God's will and we're interacting with Him on a constant basis. I was told a story about a monk by uh, this, this youth pastor I interned with. Um, and I don't know if it's, it's a, I doubt it's a true story, but it was cool to think about this verse is, um, he gave this story about a monk that read this verse and he was struggling. And so he went to some of the monks that he was being discipled by. He's like, how can I pray continually? I'm really struggling with that. And, and this monk, the, the, let's call him Papa Monk says, you know what? Hey, here's a rosary. Here's a, a necklace really of beads, um, for every breath you take move a bead and say a prayer. And so he did it for every breath he took. For And he'd come back to him the next day and go, hey, okay, I did it for a day. Like, he said, keep on doing it, keep on doing it, keep on doing it. And for a week, he's telling this guy to do this. And the monk is getting really uneasy about it. And he's like, oh, come on. Like, And so he he's like, I'm done with this. And he gives him the, the beads back. And he's like, fine, then go for it. Like, But then he started to realize that that pattern of moving those beads, he started to do it without actually moving the beads. That prayer, had, he was constantly approaching and interacting with God, and, and it, he didn't need the beads to do it. There's nothing magical about the beads or anything, but it, it got him to think about prayer. So for you, what does it... What does it look like to always rejoice, to unceasingly interact with God or pray with God or pray to God um, or, or giving thanks in all circumstances? What does that look like? You know, some of you, I, I definitely, uh, you know, respect for uh, your positive attitude. Um, about all sorts of things, right? And I can think of specific students in Refinery that they're always looking on, on the bright side of life and they're always looking at how can they you know, continue to walk with God. And I want to encourage that because I think that's definitely part of it is we need to just be joyful. We need to rejoice. We need to understand that God is in control. I want to challenge you in your small groups to discuss what are some practical steps that you can do to unceasingly or without ceasing or or praying continually? Is it a reminder, is it a string on your finger that, that every time you look at, you remember to pray? Is it something on your mirror that every, every morning you wake up and you pray? Maybe you put it on your mirror, maybe you put it on little post-it notes all over your desk and stuff like that. Maybe you put it around your computer screen. For the last few weeks, I've been praying for, uh, in, in our small group, we've been praying through um, sharing prayer requests and stuff, and I've, I've been praying for some of them right there at my computer at, in my home office. But you're like, okay, but, but Paul, you're just kind of being a little, you're exaggerating a little. We can't do it always, right? 
Well, we look at scripture and we see that, that Paul is definitely praying continually. Pro, Paul is praying without ceasing, even in the midst of, of, of being shipwrecked, of being arrested, um, all sorts of stuff, of sharing the gospel, of equipping elders, of writing and dictating this, uh, the, these, these letters to churches. He is praying without ceasing. Verse 13 of chapter 2 of this book, of 1 Thessalonians, he says, um, And we... Also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it is actually the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. A first, or Second Thessalonians 1, 3 says we ought to always, um, or we ought to, <laughs> we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and love all you have for one another is increasing. He also says in Philippians to every time I think of you, I pray for you. And that's been something that I've been challenged by is every time I'm reminded in a Facebook memory or um, maybe even just a name comes to my head. Um, I'll be praying while I'm driving or in the office. I'll, I'll pray for uh, James, for Brett, for for Allie, for um, you know, for uh, Sean, for um, all these people that are in my life that that I pray for, Preston, and and all sorts of things. Like, and and I'll text them not not when I'm driving, <laughs> when I get to church or when I get home. Uh, sometimes I'll just sit in my driveway and I'll shoot a text. Hey, Brett, I'm thinking of you praying for you. Now, we also could go, well, okay, Paul was something special, right? You know, he, he was an apostle. Maybe he's just exaggerating. Maybe he's doing, you know, he could be lying, quote unquote. But Jesus doesn't lie, right? And so let's use Jesus' words, right? Son of God, the one that's mediating for us, what does he say? He gives this parable in, in Luke um, 18, it says, then uh, Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. And he tells a story about this judge and this woman, this widow. Um, and uh, the judge didn't care about God. He was an unjust judge. And there are unjust judges, right, unfortunately. Um, but there are judges, you know, this judge was, um, you know, had a case. Um, and this widow continually, you know, bugged him and said, hey, this needs to be brought up. This needs to be brought up. Grant me justice. Grant me justice against my adversary. And for some time, he refused to just grant justice. He refused to do anything like that, right? But finally, he gave up because he's like, he says, even though, this is verse four, it says, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that God won't eventually come down and come and attack me. It's crazy to think that like this judge who didn't doesn't believe in God, doesn't fear God, um, that he's going to go, hey, you know what? Her God might come and get me, right? Her, her God might, you know, she's constantly, constantly telling me this. So she's like, hey, you know what? I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to go in her favor. People might go like, hey, what is the deal? Like God is a just God. Like why would he like... Should we pray so that we can annoy God so he could give us what we want? So, so what Jesus is saying, that, that God cares for justice for his chosen people, for, for his people that have, have come to him, that are following him. That he's a loving father, that he wants justice to be had. So he's, he's telling his disciples, you need to constantly petition and constantly pray. You know, and we're going to talk about answers. What if God says no? Or what if God says, hey, how about you, you just wait? Or what if he says yes? And so this idea of, of God answering our prayer, this is not a health and wealth gospel passage here where it's like, hey, the squeaky wheel gets, um, you know, the oil. Like that's not what is going on here. What he's saying is you need to continually pray and interact with God. You need to exchange your wishes for his wishes, for his will. You need to bend your will to his will. That's what, what Jesus is saying. 
Because if we're doing that, like God is saying, I want to shower blessings. I want, I want what is best for everybody. I don't want what, what, uh, you know, what the, the evil stuff is leads to. So let's go back to the passage. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. Then there's a semicolon and there's no semicolons in Greek, etc. Right. But what the semicolon is saying is that this next part is all about, you know, all three of those portions is included into this next part for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So the reason why we need to rejoice always, that we need to pray continually, that we need to give thanks in all circumstances, it's what God wants from us. He's given us this mediator, and and we've just finished celebrating, but we're going to continue celebrating every day the the, the sacrifice that Christ paid on the cross in, in, in conquering death, that it's because of what he did that we can rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. So like I said, announcements are going to be at the end. So Lip Sync Battle, May 8th. So sign up right now. It's on the app. Just pick up your phone. Go to the KBC app. If you haven't downloaded the KBC app yet, do that, please. Um, I'll also put it on Slack as well to sign up. But um, it's right there. Uh, go ahead and, and log in and, and, and sign up. Sign up for Lip Sync Battle, right? May 8th. Um, it is on a Saturday. So uh, you're giving. I'm giving you enough time right now. I'm looking at you. Ask your boss for some time off. That you have a special, or you could call it a recital. You could call it a um, performance. You could call it whatever you need to call it. Get that, we, get that Saturday off, all right? I'm telling you right now, get May 8th off. There should be no excuse. May 8th off, all right? I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. May 8th, all right. After that, so eight days after May 8th, so the 16th, um, I just did math in my head. Um, I think that's right. Um, but we are gonna be back in person in Refinery. Uh, we're going to finish up the prayer series in person. Uh, we'll still do like video teaching as well, but um, we're going to have small groups uh, in person. We're going to do a game in the gym. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be, as uh, Easton said today, uh, as he's in my office, it's going to be a party. We're going to party like crazy. The plan is to be in person for May and June. Um, you know, obviously Mother, well, Mother's Day, we're going to be off. Um, but, uh, the, um, Father's Day is, we're going to be off and probably, yeah, we'll see, uh, Memorial Day will probably be off as well. Um, but we're going to meet in person, play games in the gym, have a good time. Worship band's going to start practicing and polish or shake off the rust. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So that is all the announcements. We will see you guys next week.